Hi, welcome to Gentle Yoga with Jan. I'm Jan, and today I'm going to do another video from the Foot Loving Yoga series. This time, I'm going to show you some exercises and some things you can do to, to strengthen and stretch your feet. These exercises will help prevent and relieve bunions, plantar fasciitis, weak arches, and even relieve back, hip, and knee pain. Some items that might come in handy for the class will be a block if you have one, or a book, a washcloth or a, just a piece of cloth, even a tissue will work, and a firm, nice, dense blanket, and a chair. So slip off your shoes and sockies, and I'll see you on the mat. So in the first segment, we'll just start by sitting in your chair with your feet on the floor in front of you. Lift, start lifting up your heels. We're just working with range of motion right now, just working, getting the, a better range of motion with our ankles and our feet. So just simple ankle lifts up and down a few times. And then slide your feet out just a little bit further away from the chair. And now lift, pull your toes back and off the floor lifting them off the floor a few times. Bring your feet back towards the chair and lift your knee, your right knee, towards your chest and just support it here. If that's undoable, if you can't do that, then just kind of move, we'll just move on the floor as much as possible. Holding your knee, start circling your ankle in one direction, just simple ankle rotations with the foot relaxed. And now we're going to crunch our toes and make some circles. Now this might create some, some uh, Charlie horses or some cramping in your feet. If that, is the, if that is the case, just go ahead and relax the toes. If you can crunch the toes, um, crunch the toes while circling. And you'll feel that a little more intensely in the calf and in the feet. Some muscles maybe you haven't worked for a bit. Release that foot down, walk down. And now bring the left knee in towards the chest. Relax the foot to begin with and make some circles. Just simply rotating it in one direction and then the other. Make sure you're breathing through these exercises, even though we're not doing anything crazy um, physically. Um, just continue to breathe. A lot of the times we hold our breath and we don't know it. Now, if you can, crunch your toes while circling. This can be quite intense. So if that's the case, just relax your feet until that becomes easier to do. Just noticing what that feels like. Release the foot down and walk it out. So now standing behind your chair with one hand on the chair, take your feet hip distance and parallel towards each other. And let's just do a few heel lifts. So I want you to imagine that you have ice skates on. There, you, Then your ankles can't, on this first part, can't move side to side. Your feet are gonna be pretty straight in those ice skates. So imagining your feet really straight in those ice skates, start to bring the weight into the front of the, the feet and lift up the heels and then lower back down. So just lifting up and down and up. And down. This time we're going to hold it at the top. And I want you to focus on your weight now. You can take off the ice skates in your head and roll to the outsides of the feet, more to the, the, the baby toes, and now more onto the inner toes, the big toes. Back out to the side and back in. Now find center, more, more likely pressing into the ball of the foot the ball of the toe a little bit more than the outside and then roll down. So you can see that that creates some strengthening in your feet. These are really good to do. Let's roll forward again, lift up, find the center of the toes, the center of the ball of the foot and then roll back down in the straight line. Roll to the back of the heels, lift the toes. Now roll to the front, lift the heels, and roll back down, lift the toes, 
One more time. You can feel this in your calves most likely and in the arches of your feet. Really good. Bring the heels back down. Good, and just walk it out. Get your block and have it handy. I'm just gonna place it down onto the floor. Now you can do this exercise on the edge of a, a stair, a step, or you can use a block. Stepping onto the block with your heels off the block or off the edge of the stair, holding onto the railing, lift the heels up just like we did before, but this time now let the heels drop down lower than the front of the feet. Lifting up and then lowering. So as you can see, the heels coming lower creates a really good stretch in the back of the calf. One more time, lift up and then lower down. Good, go ahead and step off your block. So grab your block, we're gonna do a few exercises that'll help challenge your balance a little bit. Balancing poses in yoga, when we do balancing poses, it's not just to increase our balance, but it also is great to help with strengthen the arches of your feet, whether you know it or not. So we're going to do a few, I'm gonna guide you through a few exercises today that will help challenge your balance and help you strengthen the arches of those, of the arches of your feet. So just go ahead and place your block down in front of you and bring the weight into your right foot. And I want you to bend over and pick up that block. And it will challenge your balance. But just if you have to tap your foot down, tap your foot down. And with the block in your hand now, bend forward and see if you can place it maybe over to the left side. And come back up, bend back over, come back up. Now place it over to the right side and come back up. So while we're here, we'll just kind of try to balance, try to bring your body in and up. That'll help with your balance. And then go ahead and set the foot down and walk it out. So did that challenge your balance? And did you feel that standing leg? Not only are the arches of your feet working and strengthening, but also the, the legs. Put the block back in front of you. Bring the weight now onto the other foot. Take a deep breath and relax. Bend over if you can. You can hold onto the chair if you need to. Grab the block and come back up. Bend back over, place the block over to the side. Come back up, come back down, lift it up, and then bring it back. So just kind of moving through these ranges of motion that will challenge your balance and strengthen your feet. Bring the block back down, or foot back down, and release the block and just walk it out. So whenever you're in yoga class or you're doing balancing poses, I want you to think about your feet. Think about what you're doing with your feet and not just your balance. Another fun thing to do is, I like to do is, try to put my socks on while I'm standing. So, I don't have my sock with me, but if you can imagine taking your foot off, putting your, you can even pretend you're putting your sock, sock on, put your sock on and then put it down. Take your other sock, put it on and then place it down. So if you can't do it right now, maybe you can work up to it. If you can do it, keep doing it because that will keep you agile and um, not only flexible, but, but strong. Come back to sitting, grab your washcloth, place it on the floor, and we're gonna do an exercise that'll help the dexterity of your feet and, and, the, and strengthen your feet. Once again, if you get, if you get cramps or charley horses, just back off and um, stop and then come back in and see if you can do it without any cramping. But, so this is a really good thing to do. So place it, the, the blanket or the washcloth underneath one foot and just start to scrunch it up like you're trying to, well just let's take both of our feet on there for a moment and just try to scrunch it up and then release and scrunch and release. Now we're, I want you to pick up I want you to pick up the washcloth with your foot if you can. So grab the cloth, lift it up, take it over to the side and drop it. Go back to the cloth, grab it with your toes if you can, lift it up, bring it back, 
and drop it. Let's do that one more time. Grab the clock with your toes, lift it up, bring it over, and drop it. Grab it, lift it up, bring it back. Oops, bring it back and then drop it and then relax. So if you can, you can probably tell that that might fatigue your toes. You can tell that the, there's some muscles in there working. Let's walk out your feet. Let's do the other foot. Grab the cloth, lift it up, bring it over and drop it. Pick it up again, get a good grip on it. Lift it up, bring it back and drop it in front of you. Grab it, lift it up, bring it over a little bit, drop it. Grab it again, lift it up, bring it over, and drop it. Good. Walk it out. So whenever there's something on the floor, try picking it up with your toes instead. You'll you'll get you'll find that even that maybe one foot, maybe if you're more dominant right-handed, that the right toes might be more more um, dominant and and work better than the left. I find that's true with my toes and my hands. So kind of interesting to pay attention. Putting a pencil on the floor, that, that, that's, so let's try, try, start trying different objects and different things to, to get your dexterity and working the toes a little bit. Let's stretch our feet out a little bit now. And we'll just do that by taking the, tuck, tucking the toes underneath and just a little stretch there. Putting, applying some pressure there to stretch the top of the foot. That should feel really good. And then the other side. We're going to do a little, take that stretch a little deeper. So we're going to go onto the floor now. If you can't get on the floor, you'll just be doing this variation. And if you can't get on the floor, move your chair. So grab your blanket and your block. You might that might come in handy as well. We're going to do a variation of hero's pose that is good for the the knees, the legs, and the feet. You want to make sure that this does not stress out your knees. If this stresses out your knees, I want you to come back to the chair or just avoid this this exercise altogether. If this is not doable, so I'm sitting. I'm sitting back on my heels. A lot of people, um, this is not doable for a lot of people. So don't worry if you can't get in this position. It's, it's not the end of the world and it's not a big deal. So there's, I'm gonna set you up, try to set you up for a variation if you want to. Remember, if there's any stress, if there's any pain going on in the knees or the feet, I want you just to come out of it. There is, it's not worth, it's not worth hurting and injuring your knees or stressing the knees. So this can stress your knees um, if you have issues. If you don't, it's a great thing. So there's a couple things you can do. First of all, you can just come to this position just on your knees, tops of the feet or the toes are pointing back behind you, the knees are under the hips. So just being in this position might be okay. If you can, Put the, put the blanket underneath your seat and on the top of the back of your legs there, top of your calves. And that might be doable. And if that's not doable, come back up, go back to the chair or just avoid it. So we're stretching the top of the foot here. You want to make sure that the, the toes are pointing directly directly behind you and not splayed out to the side like this at all. You want to make sure that the knees, ankle, and the toes are on, in a straight line. So, you're, you're using the blanket if you need to, or you're coming down. Now, if that's still not doable, you can take the block and place it between your legs and sit on the block. That relieves a lot of the pressure. Again, making sure that the toes are pointing straight back behind you. I like to take my baby toe and kind of pull it out a little bit. 
I have a funny baby toe that wants to just kind of creep in. So resting your hands in your lap, just taking a few deep breaths here. Just feeling that good stretch. If you're not feeling enough, again, take the legs maybe a little wider, roll the calves out to the side. And if you can, bring the seat all the way to the floor. If you're not feeling anything, now the toes, now again, you wanna make sure that the toes are not drawing in and an angle like this, you want them straight back. So you might have to adjust again. Pull your baby toe out if it's tucking and rest your hands in your, on your knees. You should be feeling a good stretch in the top of your feet as well as perhaps maybe the quads here. So just relax, no pain. Does, we shouldn't feel, be, be, be feeling pain in this pose. Go ahead and lift up out of the pose, bring your feet back together, and tucking the toes. Now, we're going to go into a pose, and they don't call it screaming toes for nothing. This is a position that can make your toes scream. It's, it's a good thing. If it's really painful, I don't want you to do it. I want you to come out of the pose. But if it's doable, this is a good position for your feet to be in. It creates some circulation and some stimulation in a lot of acupressure points and meridians in your body. We won't get into today, but so tucking the toes underneath in starting in this position. If this is doable, just be, we're going to be here for just a little bit. If it's not doable, you can do this in the chair. Let me just show you real quick in the chair what that would look like. So pulling the, sliding the feet back and crunching the toes. Can you see how my toes are crunching underneath? So that's a, that's a way to do the position without the pressure of the whole weight of your body. On the floor, we're going to start back on the knees, knees hip distance, tucking the toes. If that's still not doing too much and you can go a little bit deeper, let the heels, let the hips come down to the heels. Now that's creating some pressure now. Now, my baby toe wants to stay, it wants to, it doesn't want to tuck because it's really short. So I have to kind of pull it in and make sure it's joining the party, getting some stimulation as well. For those of you with weird toes, make sure that all toes are tucked. And we're taking some deep breaths. We're feeling that nice, wonderful sensation of our toes crunching. Um, if you still are not feeling enough, you can slide the knees forward to crunch a little deeper. Most likely, you probably won't need to do that. So whatever level you're at, we're just going to take a few deep breaths here. <sighs> Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth a few times. Remember, we don't, this, this shouldn't feel painful. It's uncomfortable. It's not a real comfortable place. We don't want to be here for too long, but it's really good. Coming out is where you might feel sensation, but come out slowly, point the toes down, and let's just counter stretch back into that other pose that we were just in, just to counter stretch just for a moment, and then come back up. So how was that? I'm going to show you another exercise that'll help keep your feet agile and moving in all directions, covering every range of motion. You think about it, if we are just sitting, if we are just walk and do the same movement with our feet and our body every day, then we're not really working most the, the range of motions that our body can, our can do. And the feet are really important to have them be mobile and, and movable and strong so that we can be stable. If we find ourselves catch tripping on something or just walking on something inst unstable and we um, trip or we come on, on balance for just a moment, that we want to make sure that we have that strength and mobility in our feet to catch us and to keep us what's going on in your feet really affects the rest of your body. So a simple exercise, just quickly we're going to, I know it seems a little crazy and simple and um, probably not effective, but it really is, is we're going to write the alphabet with our foot. So lifting one foot off the floor, I want you just to start writing the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, E, 
F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y and finally Z. Set that foot down and just walk it out. So I want you to notice which foot you just did and which which hand you're dominant. So if you're right-handed, I want you to notice if the right hand the right foot and the left foot feel different in writing. It's pretty crazy. This is also a really good brain exercise, believe it or not. So take your other foot up and let's do the alphabet on the other side. Again, noticing if it's a little more easier to write, it's more fluid um, with one angle than the other. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and finally, Z. Step your foot down and walk it out. So I know that probably didn't seem too crazy, but we're going to allow that movement to be really good. So if you only have a few minutes every day to work your ankles, that would probably be a good one. I'm going to show you a few stretches to really get into the and stretching your toes. So if you can bring your foot up on top of your other leg, go ahead and do that. Um, and we're going to take each toe and just pull it apart, separating it, wiggling it. So if you haven't worked your feet for a while, they might be pretty stiff and they might be popping and cracking quite a bit. That's all right, that's good stuff. So. Our feet have been crammed in shoes and they, they're not able to stretch out. So this is a really good way to stretch them. If you find your curls are your toes are curling, your, they're, they're curling, you can really just take your hand and pull it to stretch it. Pull them out. I have a, my baby toe kind of wants to curl in more and it wants to also so this is really key for bunions and things is to keep um, from our toes from being really tight is to keep them spread yoga toes when i first started practicing yoga my i you know they'd say spread your toes but there was just no way that was happening my toes were really kind of tight together and but now i can i can spread them pretty good um when they're on the floor i can spread them pretty good but so that takes practice and i mean it takes work and but that's really important in your stability in your feet and your knees and your hips and your back is and to prevent those bunions and um, plantar fasciata and we're gonna these exercises are really good that we've been doing the stretches are really good for plantar fasciata fasciitis and also the ball exercises so if you haven't watched the ball class make sure you you do that, that that's a really, really good thing to do so just taking your feet and and pulling them and we'll cover massage in another video but getting them pulled apart and it might not feel so great we have a lot of acupressure points in our feet and especially in our toes that might be pretty tender so as you're working the feet just pay attention to that now we're going to do something that um, is kind of strange and it's um, doesn't feel the best but it's really it's, it's a really good thing so don't be alarmed if this is if putting your fingers between your toes is kind of weird so what we're going to do is just a handshake with our foot is take take each finger and place it between each toe if you can do that some people it's really tender and they may not even be able to do that but if you can get their fingers in there get your your fingers in between those toes like that and if you're not feeling anything, you're pretty comfortable, I want you to take your other hand and squeeze 
the toes together so you you feel some we're stimulating the sides of the toes of each toe and that might be tender now go ahead and pull the toes back while your fingers are in there and now tuck them tuck your toes and this is where you really might feel some sensation tuck your toes and squeeze and then pull it back and then squeeze so there's some good juicy sensation acupressure foot reflexology a lot of stuff going on here go ahead and release that another thing that you can do is you know the things that you put between your toes when you're painting your toenails those little rubber things that kind of look like little fingers put those between your toes and just sit for a, a bit and while you're watching TV or, TV or something just sit, let them be in there for 20 20 minutes or so or 10 minutes start with a few minutes and then work up but that's a good way to get those toes spread really important to prevent those bunions and to help relieve that um, so now just kind of take your hands and just work out your feet that should feel really good you should have a lot of circulation going on in your feet right now that'll feel good let's do the other side just start by pulling the toes apart forward and back it's kind of getting some movement Again, my toes are popping, and it, those, those toes that tend to curl on the underneath side, just take your fingers and slide them out, trying to pull and lengthen the toe. If you have a, a toe that kind of wants to curl in, then make sure that that is the toe that, that pulls out away. If you have a bunion or tendency to a bunion on the toe side, that is the toe curling in this way. So most likely you'll want to pull the toe. You'll just take the toe and pull it out. It's my baby toe that I have the bunion, which is really uncommon kind of, but so my, it's my baby toe that I want to pull away. You see that? And then pull it, at times tends to curl. So I want to pull from the underneath side and just lengthen it. That should feel really good again on those other toes. Just feels like, oh, it feels so good to stretch out just like it does when it feels good to stretch your body. This will feel good to stretch your toes. So now with the foot here, take each finger and place one between each toe. So you're getting between each toe. And if that's, if that's pretty tender, just be really gentle. You can also put, weave some cloth in there. And there's also things called yoga socks that you that, I've, that I have that you can slide your feet in, and yoga toes if you ever want to check those out. The little rubber things that, and I couldn't find mine, but you can slide your feet in those that are little rubber cushiony things that you can slide your feet in and just let them sit for a bit. So with your fingers between your toes, go ahead and close your other hand and close them in tight. Feel some yummy stimulation there. And then relax it and release it and then back, squeeze. And if you can, pull the toes, flex the toes away from you with your fingers still in your toes, and then curl them and crunch them in. My baby toe just wants to, doesn't like this too much, and then curl it and crunch. Oh, it feels so yummy. <laughs> they don't call it screaming toes for nothing. So again, if this is too much, back off a bit. And then just take your hands and work the feet, work the toes. And we'll get into a massage and it's just some other good, good stuff in another video. So bring your feet down and you can, you can tell that you can tell that there's a lot of circulation now in your feet. So I'm going to get on the floor and show you a few exercises. So if you can get on the floor, get on the floor. If not, you can do it from, you can maybe just bend over and do these exercises. Um, from a seated position and holding up, but it's easier for me to be on the floor. So these exercises that I'm going to do with my feet, like I said, you can do them from the chair, but it's a little easier if you can get down. And sometimes it might be easier to have someone help you. So we're not only working the muscles, but we're also working coordination and neuro, neuro um, connection. So um, let's see how it goes. I'm not very coordinated in my toes. Start with your feet flat and we're going to start by holding 
all the toes down except for the big toe. So pressing down with the ball of the foot, lift up your, see if you can lift up your big toe without the other toes coming with it. Push down with the ball, the mound of that toe and lift it up as high as you can. Now release it down, lift it up again, trying to press down. So if you can, if you're really, if you're coordinated in your feet, see if you can push all the other toes down except your big toe and then lift. I have to hold them down because I cannot, I can't coordinate that for some, it's getting better. But holding them down, lift the big toe up and then release it down. Can you feel that muscle right here in the arch of your foot working? Really good stuff here. Lift the toe and then release it. One more time, lift and release. Now we're going to hold the big toe down and lift the other toes. So push, if you can, the big toe down while you lift the others. Start with holding it with your finger first and then lifting and then releasing it down, lifting. See if you can do it without holding the toe down. See, I just, it's, and it's fun to see your face or what you do with your face while you're trying. So the weird things, do, you do weird things with your face. Mm -hmm. So lifting those toes and release down. Don't forget to breathe. Lift every toe with the big toe and down. I want you to pay attention where in your feet do you feel those muscles working. So now we're working the muscles here in the top of the foot. Can you feel that? And also in the arch, also in the arch of the foot too. Lifting, good. Now hold the big toe and the baby toe to the floor while you lift everything else. And you can feel that inner part of the arch of the foot working. Big toe, baby toe down, lift those other toes and release. So it'd be really fun. I'd like to hear if some of you can, can do this. Um, if you have that ability, I definitely do not, but it's getting better. Lift again, just the middle part. Good, and relax. Feet, let's do the other foot. Holding all the toes down except for the big toe. Lift up and release down. Lift up the big toe, pushing down with the ball of the foot here, and then release it down. Lift it up and release it down. See if you can do it without, see if you can do it without, now concentrate, you have to concentrate. See if you can lift the big toe without lifting those other toes. This, this left side is is so much worse i mean i can't i can't do it without holding it and you'll also even feel it up into the leg so as you know everything is connected connected tissue and everything is working together so we're not affecting just the feet but all these exercises are going to help with alignment of your knees and your hips so if we have tight feet we're going to have probably tight calf muscles and that's going to pull on the knee and then the hip and then eventually the back so if things you have things in going these things going on by taking care of and helping your feet you can do that okay back to this let's do two more lifting and releasing lifting and releasing so you can feel it clear up in my leg breathing now keep the big toe down while I see if you can lift the other toes and release. Keeping the big toe down. See, now this is a lot easier for me. The other, not so much. That means that's showing the, the, the imbalance that I have. Lifting and release. Now hold the big toe and the baby toe down while you lift the middle toes and release. Lift the middle toes, keep everything else down and release. Two more times, release, lift, and release. Ah, so we have a lot of judgment about our feet. I know I my feet are kind of weird. I have like this toe longer than the other and this toe's way shorter and sometimes our feet don't look the best, but we need to start paying attention to them giving them some love and taking care of our feet because of it, what's going on in your feet is going on in the rest of your body. And if we have happy feet, 
then we'll have a happy body. Get your shoes off frequently, work your feet, not only by the ball work, but these exercises that I've showed you today, hopefully that will help. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.